Hi, this is Josh from Brown Dog Gadgets, and today I'm going to show you how to make a dual axis solar tracker. This thing will track in both X and Y, and is responsive to sunlight or even a flashlight. To accomplish this, we're going to be using a set of light detecting resistors, an Arduino Uno, and two small servos. You'll also notice we're using quite a bit of custom laser cut wood. And we have the files on our website, or you can grab a kit from us off of browndoggadgets.com. This project will take approximately one hour to complete. The only tools we'll be needing are a set of screwdrivers. We've designed this from the ground up to be non-soldering, to be more accommodating to newbies in the electronics world, as well as students who want to make their own tracker. For this project, you'll need the following tools. A screwdriver set, a wire stripper, some rubber feet, and some cable wrap also helps. For the electronics, we'll be needing an Arduino Uno, a sensor shield, two 9G size micro servos with metal gears, a 4 port and 5 port terminal block, and some jumpers. You'll be needing four JST connectors, some 10,000 ohm resistors, four light detecting resistors, and optional but really, really nice to have are a LED voltmeter and a small solar cell to get readings off of for that voltmeter. You can grab the laser files for our project off browndoggadgets.com. You'll also be needing a whole bunch of 832 screws in 3 4 inch length and the appropriate nuts. And you'll also be needing one long 832 screw about 2 inches. You'll also be needing four small number two wood screws as well, or something else that's about equivalent to that. Just a small wood screw, and you'll need four of them. If you'd rather use a written set of instructions, we have both picture guides and a step-by-step -step IKEA style diagram available on both our website and instructables.com. Same goes with the code and the laser cut files as well for this entire project. Make sure your servos each come with two wood screws and one smaller machine screw, as well as a couple different servo arms. If they don't, you'll need to get them. Use two of the wood screws that came with your servo to mount it on a round servo mounting plate. Attach the servo to the underside of the plate and screw the two wood screws into place. It doesn't take a lot of pressure and make sure they're securely in place as the servo is really important to keeping the entire project together. Mount your second servo in the exact same way using our second servo mount piece. Again, you want to come at it from the back side, otherwise things will fit into place and your wire will get crunched. We'll now be attaching the servo arms to their appropriate plates. To do this, you'll be needing the four number two wood screws or the equivalent ones that you picked up. For the round base plate, make sure you're on the bottom side, and that'd be the side without the arrow on it. Be very, very careful that you don't break the servo arms. Also be sure that the plastic nub is pointing out and not going into the hole. As you can see here, it's sticking up from the bottom. Same thing with one of our triangle arms as well. That nub should be facing outward, not inward. Be careful not to break your servo arms. But even if you do, you do have extra with your servos, so just use a different one instead. It's fairly really easy to do, and as long as it's secure in place, you're fine. Let's start assembling the rest of our project by putting the base together. Attach the four legs to your round servo mount using the 832 screws and the appropriate nuts. Don't screw them in too tight because you need a little bit of wiggle room later. It should look like this when you're finished. Attach your servo mount with the four legs to the base plate. Make sure that the cable is pointing backwards on your servo and not going towards the front. This will make things easier later. Using more nuts and screws, attach the four legs to your base plate via the T-connectors. 
at this point tightly screw everything into place and again double check that the servo has the wires going backwards not forwards. At this point you'll also want to put rubber feet on the bottom otherwise those screws are going to scratch up your work table and make the entire thing extremely unstable. So put those on right away. Next, we're going to build the top of our tracker. We'll be needing all these parts here as well as a whole bunch of screws and nuts. Grab your triangle arm, the one with the servo arm on it, and we're going to put that on the right side of our top piece. It'll just pop into place and should go in there rather snugly. Use a couple screws to secure it in place when you're finished. Do the same thing with the other arm on the other side and use screws to secure it in place. This is our sensor divider area. We'll be needing several small pieces, starting with this one, to make that area happen. Pop the pieces together in this order and use two screws to secure it in place. We'll be coming back to this later when we start using our electronics, but for now, leave it be once everything is hooked together. Once you have all six screws put together and everything's hooked up, making sure your servo arm is on the right side, you're good to go with the top piece. We'll leave the solar cell and the electronics for far later, but you're good to go for this. We're now going to build the center of our solar tracker using the remaining wooden pieces as well as several 832 screws and their nuts. Attach the servo and the other two corresponding mounts to one of our long bracer pieces. We'll then be using the other bracer piece to go on the opposite side. The round piece with the arrow and the servo arm goes in the bottom and use four screws and nuts to screw it into place. Double check all your screws are tight and that the arrow that's etched onto our wooden round piece is pointing towards the servo. Servos can only move in 180 degrees, so we have to home the servo so that our pieces correspond where it thinks zero is. This is pretty easy to do and just requires a little bit of pushing together and turning parts. Place your center piece onto the servo. Get it down there nice and snug, and then turn it counterclockwise until it can no longer move. This is now zero. Take off the middle piece, and then put it so that the servo and the arrow are pointing in this direction. Now that is where zero will be and where it will start from once our program runs. Use one of your small servo machine screws to screw in the center to our base plate servo. Then we're going to be doing the exact same thing with our top piece and that middle servo right there. Place the top piece and push into your servo and move it counterclockwise, which you'll have to be doing several times, until our home, our zero position, is having that tray be flat on top or slightly askew to the back. Use your remaining small machine screw to secure the servo arm into the servo. Use your long 8x32 screw on the opposite side of the top. That's a nice pivot point, and we'll be needing that to make sure things don't fall apart. You can use a nut on the back side of it to kind of hold it in place, but don't screw it in very tightly. Let it be very loose on there. Let's double check the movement range of our solar tracker. Make sure that the horizontal can only go about that far, and that it can move pretty far to the left. Also make sure that the vertical can only go about parallel with the ground, or a little bit further back is fine as well. If not, you have to go back and change these, otherwise the homing will completely off with our software. At this time, you can attach the Arduino Uno via several of these screw spots on our base plate, and also pop on our sensor shield. Sensor shield is very handy as it cuts down the number of wires we'll be needing to attach our servos and other parts it's highly recommended you use that. Our four JST connectors hold our sensors in place. 
Snip the tips off the end of the wires and strip them just a little bit. Cut down the legs on our light detecting resistors about two thirds, so they're about that length, about a centimeter. Press our light detecting resistors into the female JST connectors and make sure they go down as far as they can and are flush with the top of the connector. Do this to all four. Thread the sensor setups through the four spots on our sensor divider. Push them down as far as you can and make sure they're securely in place. If they're a little bit loose, don't worry too much as the weight of the project will actually keep everything pushed down and together. Take the four positive red wires from your sensor cables, twist them together and put them into the first hole of your five port terminal block. Five port terminal block, not the four, the five. I find it helpful to put my black wires in a certain order. The way I have it is red positive wires, then top left, bottom left, top right, bottom right. It doesn't matter which order you put them in, but this helps me keep track of them because we need to know which ones are which before we hook them up to the Arduino. Twist four of your 10,000 ohm resistors together and stick them to one of the holes on your four port terminal block. On the opposite side, use one of your jumper cables. This is our common negative and will be going to the ground position on the Arduino. Each of the four resistors needs to match up on the opposite side from each of our four black wires coming off our sensors. But you also have to shove into the other side a jumper cable. So that's what it looks like when it's all together. Each of those gets a jumper cable and a 10,000 ohm resistor. Now also coming off of our red wires from our sensors is another jumper. That's our common positive cable going in. That will be going to the five volt position on the Arduino. Make sure everything's nice and secure in there. It's really easy for those things to get loose and to come apart, which makes the entire project stop working. Use a bit of foam tape or twist ties to hold it all together. In case you're wondering, here's a wiring diagram of how everything hooks together. The horizontal servo goes to pin nine, the vertical servo goes to pin 10. This is really easy via the sensor shield on top. Just make sure that you have the yellow signal wire in signal and then the positive and negative in the right spots for those. Otherwise, it'll make things go a bit weird. Run our common positive cable, which is the red coming off all those sensors, into the five volt on the right side of the Arduino. You can run the common negative all the way to one of the grounds next to it. That's the negative spot on the Arduino. Get those into place. We'll now be hooking up the four negative sensor wires to their appropriate spot on the Arduino. To go over that verbally, top left goes to pin two, bottom left goes to pin zero, top right goes to pin three, bottom right goes to pin one. Double check this as it's really important. Make sure all those wires are secure in place and if there's something wrong, just undo them and put them back. This is the most common area to have an issue with, getting those cables mixed up. That's why I like to have everything in a very nice and neat order from the get-go. Otherwise, just double check things. You can always change which pins are which via the code. At this point, you should upload the code to the Arduino. You can find that on browndoggadgets.com. You can also hook up our little LED voltmeter if you want to, or not. We have a nice little T-spot there. You can also hook up a solar cell on top and use the remaining holes of our four port terminal block to hook the voltmeter to the solar cell. This just gives a nice little output reading and it's kind of nice to show off. I highly recommend using some cable wrap or twist ties to hold all those cables together. Otherwise they kind of go all over the place, get a bit unwieldy and can snag into each other. Cable wrap's great, but otherwise twist ties, rubber bands, whatever works to hold them down. Use a flashlight or other light source to test out the range of motion and sensitivity, and also to make sure everything is hooked up correctly. If you need to re-home or change where home is for your servos, you can easily do that just by undoing one screw. It's often very handy to do in case of an issue, or if you want to change your code to change the range of motion, you can do that as well. 
So that's the project. Thanks for watching, and if you have any questions, you can leave a comment or shoot us an email. Again, all these files, all the descriptions, all the write-ups are on our website, browndoggadgets.com. And feel free to modify and change these things for your own personal purposes or educational needs. Thanks a bunch.